The full blood worm moon. Sounds odd, right? But it's actually something we should get excited about. Let's raise that IQ. Whenever a full moon has the word blood describing it, it just means that the moon is going to turn a reddish color because the full moon is going through a total lunar eclipse. Well, worm, that's the most common full moon name in March. Reason why? You see a lot of worms this time of year. The last blood moon was visible from the Carolinas on November 8, 2022. A total lunar eclipse happens when the Earth passes directly between the sun and moon, completely casting its shadow onto the moon's surface. Like any other object, the Earth casts two shadows. A darker umbra is where the eclipse peaks, surrounded by a lighter penumbra. The event looks like this, slowly turning into this beautiful red color as sunlight is filtered through the Earth's atmosphere, allowing for the longer red wavelengths to show themselves. The color is determined by what's in the atmosphere that night or morning. More water vapor, or especially larger particles from wildfires, scatters more blue light, making for a redder eclipse. The full blood worm mood begins Friday morning, March 14, 2025, a little after 1 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The moon will be totally eclipsed from 2.26 a.m. to 3.31. This is the peak of the event. This 65-minute window is when the moon will be its orangey red. The absolute best time to look is when the moon is deepest into the Earth's shadow. That happens just before 3 a.m. The show is officially over at 4.47 a.m. when the partial eclipse ends. Okay, save you missed this one. The next one, March 3rd, 2026. But the moon sets during totality and sunrise interferes, so it's not great. But 2029 will have two total lunar eclipses in June and December right here in the Carolinas. Last note, check out this map. This lunar eclipse is special because it can be seen across all of the continental United States. The next blood moon seen coast to coast, New Year's Day 2048. So mark your calendars. I'm meteorologist Chris Mulcahy.